Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at this nice little desktop computer from the 90s. Now this is a Unisys desktop PC. It's a brand that you don't come across all that often and I thought it would be interesting to go over it. Now this is a Unisys CWP5756 desktop PC and let's take a look at it but first a word from our sponsor. Now this video is sponsored by PCBWay, a full feature custom PCB prototyping service. If you need PCB prototypes, SMD stencils, PCB assembly, flexible PCBs or advanced PCBs, PCBWay has got you covered. They also offer CNC and 3D printing based on CAD files that you can upload in order to get a quotation. Also, check out their community section where you can find hundreds of do-it-yourself electronics projects from the community as well as their store where they sell lots of cool electronics projects. But now, back to the computer. And as you can see and hear, it has the Microsoft Windows Plus screensaver installed from the Nature team where you see the kind of fish uh, swimming by making these cool little sounds on your desktop. I think it's pretty representative for the 90s when Microsoft Windows 95 was released with the Microsoft Windows Plus pack, so that's pretty cool. But let's start by taking a look at the computer. So let's start it up and see what we have here. And upon starting, we get greeted with the video card splash screen here, number nine, a visual technology. It seems to be a Pentium S CPU running at 75 megahertz with 16 megabytes of RAM. It has the standard award BIOS, has a 540 megabyte hard drive. So yeah, a pretty basic setup for that era being Pentium 75 megahertz, 16 megabytes of RAM and 500 megabyte hard drive. Other than that, the BIOS isn't all that special. So let's just continue with the boot process and see what we have here. So we appear to be having Microsoft Windows 95 installed with the Microsoft Plus package, which is always cool to see. I used to love how they added that Microsoft Plus badge to the Windows 95 splash screen. And here you can see it has the nature theme installed on the Windows 95 desktop. It does take a while to boot. Uh, the Pentium 75 definitely is not the fastest Pentium out there. But after a while, we will be greeted with the Microsoft Plus theme startup sound. And of course, with Microsoft Plus, you could go completely bonkers and add a sound effect to pretty much every action that you could do on the Windows 95 desktop. So that was typical from these, you know, PCs from that era that, you know, multimedia was pretty new for these types of PCs and people just went completely out there by configuring all kinds of sounds. And how many people remember the sluggishness of a PC from that era when you're closing windows, you could actually see it tumbling down. But yeah, back to the actual hardware. So the Unisys CWP5756, a pretty classic desktop uh, PC. It has a really classic uh, look and feel. Some might call it a little bit boring looking, but I kind of have a soft spot for these types of, you know, classic uh, desktop PCs. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an LED display, nor does it have a turbo button, but it is a Pentium 75, so there's really no need for that. What we do have is a CD-ROM drive, a three and a half inch disk drive, two LEDs, a power button and a reset button. And obviously the classic Windows 95, Microsoft Plus, Office 97. So all the good stuff installed on this computer. We also have a sound card and I've attached two speakers for the multimedia aspect. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool PC. And again, I really loved the Microsoft Plus uh, enhancement of Windows 95. I think it goes really well with this machine. And especially screensavers like this, you know, that that presented this, this new era of multimedia. You can actually see that it's kind of struggling to process the animations of the different fish here. Something you probably didn't even notice back in the day, but becomes very apparent now. 
I have to say this is definitely not the fastest Pentium 75 I ever worked with. It probably needs a good reinstall. But one of the things I really find funny with these types of systems is all these sound effects that you add when you are opening applications or you are resizing the screen size or the window size or you're maximizing, minimizing stuff. You get sounds all over the place, which, uh, you know, a real blast from the past. So yeah, now time to take a look at the actual hardware. So as I already mentioned, this is a Unisys desktop PC, the CWP5756, 75, indicating the CPU speed. It has the Intel Inside sticker, so you can expect an Intel CPU here. We have a power button, a reset button. We have two LEDs, one for the power and one for the hard drive, a three and a half inch disk drive and a CD-ROM drive. So they opted for a different color scheme for the disk drive and a CD-ROM drive just to break up the flow of the case a little bit. So moving to the back of the PC, we have the Unisys product sticker here with the FCC ID and nothing special here. We have a standard power supply. We've got some IO ports, serial and parallel. And much to my surprise, we also had two PS2 ports here, one for the keyboard and one for the mouse, something you don't typically find in these AT style systems. We also have three expansion cards, a video card, sound card and networking card. But yeah, let's open up the PC to see how things are organized on the inside. And first thing I notice is that we have a couple of hard drives here sitting on top of the power supply and the disk drive and CD-ROM drive here on the front. So let's turn it around. Pretty nice looking system. There's not a lot of dust here. It looks almost brand new. We've got three expansion cards. You can already see that we have an Intel based motherboard. So let's start by unplugging the expansion cards. We have the 3Com Etherlink 3 networking card. Pretty standard card. Always nice to have in a computer. We have a PCI sound card, which is this PCI based X Wave card, the ESS Allegro, a pretty standard uh, PCI based sound card that you found in a lot of OEMs like Compaq or IBM as well. We have the S3 Trio 64 PCI video card, a number nine card. I always love the silk screen on the back here, made in the USA. So yeah, pretty standard card. As I am going to be removing the motherboard here, I'm going to start by removing these jumper cables here, which, you know, are really uh, annoying. Luckily, uh, they are marked so we know where to reset the speaker, the hard drive LED goes to. So that's already a plus, but yeah, still don't get why they never really standardize these types of connectors. We also have the power supply fan connector, which goes into the motherboard. And I actually wanted to take a look now at this uh, hard drive bay here because we have two IDE hard drives in this system and they are sitting on top of the power supply unit. So let's just go ahead and remove these cables and see how we can get these hard drives out. I notice there's one screw here, so we're gonna be unscrewing that. And as soon as we've released that, we can kind of pull up this little drive bay here and let it sit on its side like so. And there is a single screw here which holds the drive bay in place. So yeah, removing that screw gives us better access to the actual drive bay. And what we have here are two identical IDE hard drives. They are two Fujitsu drives, 540 megabytes each. Jumper functions clearly documented here on the top cover. So one is set up as a master and the other is set up to be a slave. With the hard drives out of the way, we can get a clearer view of the power supply, which is a standard 200 watts power supply. I'm also going to be removing this front cover here as this is required to get the drive base out. So yeah, we've got the PC speaker here. We have the reset button and the power button here, some LEDs. And in order to get the disk drive and the CD-ROM drive out, we can simply pull these to latches here and just slide them right on out. So there's no screws that need to be removed. It uses this kind of rail system. So let's go ahead and remove the power supply cables and the IDE cables and then slide the drives right on out. 
Now to remove the motherboard, we need to remove all of the IDE cables, the power supply cables, and then remove a couple of screws so that we can slide the motherboard out of the case. It's always a bit finicky to get this out, uh, especially here on the two PS2 ports. There was this thing clamping the ports uh, really tight, but we got it out. So let's take a look at the motherboard that we have here. A fairly traditional Pentium based motherboard, a very early model. This is the PT2000. It is a Intel chipset based motherboard featuring the Intel 430 FX chipset, better known as the Triton chipset. Released in 1995, this was actually the third Intel chipset supporting Pentium CPUs, starting off with the 430LX from 1993, only supporting 60 and 66 megahertz models, going through Neptune in 1994, covering speeds up to 133 megahertz, with Triton being a very popular chipset, supporting stuff like EDO RAM, and bus mastering on the IDE controllers, giving you improved speed in terms of disk I.O. We have four sticks of EDO memory, four megabyte each, giving us a total of 16 megabytes. We have four ISA slots and also four PCI slots, giving you lots of options to upgrade your system. The motherboard also comes with its uh, two channel IDE controller, floppy disk controller, it also has a parallel port and two serial ports embedded, which was pretty common for these types of motherboards. We have a standard AT style power connector. And kind of surprising to me is that we also have two PS2 ports here, one for the keyboard and one for the mouse, something that you don't typically find on these AT style motherboards because they usually come with the, the bigger DIN keyboard connector. We have a coin cell for uh, storing the CMOS settings. We've also got some level two cache chips on the motherboard here. I believe this system has 256 kilobytes of cache. We also have some jumpers to specify the cache size and the size of the individual chips. Here we have the award BIOS chip version 1.09, copyright 1995. We've got the voltage regulator here, providing the supply voltage to the CPU. We have a jumper here to configure the CPU, both for standard voltage and VRE voltage. Here we have the CPU with the CPU heatsink and the cooler attached to it. And you know, it was a bit annoying to get the CPU out of its socket because the little hinge here on the socket was very difficult to remove without a screwdriver. I really hate it when they are really tied down that you just can't pull them up uh, by yourself. Um, the heatsink in itself was uh, firmly attached to the CPU. It was kind of glued on, which is something that you typically see on these types of CPUs. Here we have the Intel 75 marking here on the back of the CPU, uh, clearly indicating that this is an Intel Pentium 75. And as you can see here, the heatsink is firmly attached to the CPU and you just can't uh, remove it very easily. So yeah, socket five motherboard, obviously. Here we can see the CPU socket. Configuration of the system is done through jumpers. For example, the bus to CPU frequency ratio. We have the clock or the bus speed that we can set on the CPU. We have the system clock that we can uh, set uh, in accordance to the PCI clock. So yeah, all in all, it's always nice to see these early Pentium style motherboards with the Intel 430 FX chipset. It's not the fastest uh, system out there, but it does really capture those, you know, mid nineties Pentium uh, based uh, era. So yeah, that's about it for me for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed my time with this Unisys Pentium 75. It has switched owners since I uh, shot this uh, video, but I thought it would be interesting just to create a quick little uh, video on it. I mean, these types of machines are great for retro-based systems, not only for MS-DOS, but also for these early Windows 95 games. 
they are definitely not super fast but i mean they are definitely a step up when comparing them to a 486 so yeah that's definitely a plus i also liked microsoft plus here on this windows 95 system it was really nice to see that back again in action so yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. I hope everybody has a great weekend. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I really hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.